while. You know, I too want to thank you all for coming out. There are many things you could have found to do with your time this evening. So we pray that as you're here tonight, we're going to make it very much worth your time to be here. But not just we, but God, as you listen to what he has for us to share with you, it's going to make it very much worth your time. Now, as you heard said, our goal is to do more than just to make you healthy. There are other people who can come here and talk to you in terms of health. But Christ, when he dealt with his people, he wanted to make the man or woman whole. And so that is our purpose for being here this over the course of these next six weeks. You see our topic being diabetes. But before I go into our topic, I just want to share with you as Brother Lemon and my wife as we teach, we want you to know we're going to be teaching you from three perspectives. One is medical science. Number two is going to be your Bible. And number three is from inspired writers. Now you probably, Brother Lemon covered it very well, so I don't have to go into telling you about how we will teach you from your Bible. There are plenty of help principles throughout the scripture. One that I want you to keep in mind as we present to you while we're here, many of us know this verse, but I want us to give a great deal of thought to it. I want you to know that as you're here, the enemy does not like it. He does not like it. So as you're here, you're going to hear some things that you probably haven't heard before. It's going to pull at the traditions, how you were raised, so on and so forth. I can tell you this because I grew up and on a farm. I used to hunt as well. So basically, if it moved, if we could shoot it and kill it, we ate it. Some of you might know what I'm talking about. I don't know. Yes, sir. But you know one thing? My grandparents and even my mom. My mom is 85 now. Her health isn't as good as it could be, but she's 85. Keep in mind, most of you probably are professionals. You sit behind a desk every day. You're not as active as, or we are not as active as our grandparents used to be. As a result, we cannot eat and do the things that they used to do. Hard work, sunshine, and sweat will get a lot of unclean things out of you, a lot of toxins out. So I want to read to you, and let this be a text that will motivate you and it's found in 1 Corinthians chapter 6, 19 and 20. I'm going to read both of those. And many of you who have your Bibles, I want you to turn and read with me. This is one part I'm going to zero in on. Then we're going to move on into our topic. It reads, what? And you notice how Paul puts that. It's like he puts it in a way as if to say, didn't you know? But he says, what? Know ye? Not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in you, which ye have of God, and ye are not your own, for ye are bought with a price. We don't get anything else. I want us to get that. That price that we were bought with, no one else can pay it for us. God has told us that our body is not our own. The enemy is going to sit there. He's going to tell you as we speak over the next six weeks that... You don't have to listen to that. You can do, it's yours. You can do what you want. Put that off to tomorrow, next week, or next year. That's the voice of the enemy. I've sat in, in settings like this and heard people speak, and I know the thoughts that have come to me. God wants us to take care of ourselves. If he tells us something that lines up with his word in terms of health principles, he's not going to say, don't worry about that. Do know that it's the enemy. And that same voice has gotten many to the point where they are now diagnosed with diabetes, hypertension, and the list goes on and on. So at this point, as I mentioned, know the voice that speaks to you. A lot of things will make sense to you, so we're going to move right ahead. But you know, I want to have a brief word of prayer myself. Please bow with me for a brief moment. Father in heaven, I come before you at this time seeking your direction and guidance and the power of your Holy Spirit. 
to speak words of wisdom that I don't know, but you do. And you have told us how be it when the spirit of truth is come, he will lead and guide us into all truth. And so we pray for fulfillment of that this evening. Be with me now, speak to me, that I may in turn speak to your people. I ask this, Father, in the name of Jesus. Amen. Our topic, diabetes. Was it the sugar? Many times we do hear that people have sugar diabetes, or people will say they got the sugar. Well, to a point, that's true. But I want to share with you, we're going to find out this evening that it is more than just the sugar. Diabetes. Did many of you know that 155,000 to 600, 160,000 Americans die each year from diabetes and its complications? How many of you know someone with diabetes? Let me see a show of hands. Look at this. If you look around, you see pretty much 99% of the hands up. As I present to you, I'm going to be talking mainly concerning type 2 diabetes because type 2 can be reversed. Did, many, did you all know that it can be reversed? Yes, it can. I have no shame to tell you that because we have seen people where it has been reversed. I'll give you a testimony real quick. Last year in November, my wife and I were coming back from doing a presentation. I got a call from a gentleman. He's a truck driver. And many of you, if you know about truck drivers, you have to take a physical. You have to pass that physical before they will let you get behind the wheel. Or if they find out you have a chronic disease that you can, as the world likes to tell you, maintain it, they will allow you X amount of time, I don't know if it's two, three months, or whichever, to bring that disease under control, be it hypertension or mainly diabetes. Because if you're behind a truck or behind a wheel and you lapse into what they call a comatose state, we know what will happen. That's why they do it with bus drivers, water bus drivers, school bus drivers. So, but he called, and he had heard about what we do. To make a long story short, I met with him, sat down, we did a, a consultation, which I want you all to know, we are available for consultations. There's a little green card that you all should be in your packet as we present. If you find that you're interested in that, please com complete that card, and also check off what your health concern is, and we will collect that at the end of the night. But he was a diabetic, he had been diagnosed, they had given him medication. He did not want to take the medication. I asked him, well, what are you going to do if you don't want to take the medication? So he had no plan. I met with him, gave him a plan to follow, and we'll be sharing that with you as well. He started following the information. His blood sugar was ranging anywhere between 140 and 150. Four days after I met with him, he calls me back, excited, telling me that for the last day and a half, two days, his blood sugar was now running consistently between, I think it's 80, 85, maybe 90. And if you're a diabetic, I'm going to give you the numbers in a little bit, he was way below the number to be classified as a diabetic. So just pay close attention, if you will, to what we're going to give you. But I'm going to give you some more stats. African American, African American. Americans, Hispanic Americans, Native Americans are the high, have the highest rate of diabetes. Next one. Some 57, now look at this, some 5.7 million to 6 million Americans are potentially undiagnosed. That could be either one of you sitting here. It very well can. That is a very high number. 